Quadratic functions, standard form. How to graph in standard form. What are they? Quadratic functions are polynomial functions with one or more variables where the highest exponent of the variable is 2. Why? Helps track objects that have been thrown near the surface of the earth. Interesting fact, African buffalo herds display voting behavior. Individuals stand up and look in one direction to where they want to go and then sit down. Only adult females vote. Now, let's take a look at a quadratic function in standard form, so we can get a feel for it. Remember, the form we want is f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where c is the y-intercept. One key bit of information is the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. In this case, the axis of symmetry is the line x is equal to 0. The great thing about the axis of symmetry is it cuts the graph in half. So we can pick any two points horizontally and count towards the axis of symmetry and it will be the same, whether it's closer to the vertex or further away. Since the function is in standard form, we can also use the formula x is equal to negative b all over 2a to find the axis of symmetry. What do we think is one key bit of information that we haven't talked about yet? That's correct, the vertex. The vertex can be a minimum or maximum point. And in this case, we have a minimum at 0, 0. Now, let's talk about how do we know if there's a minimum or maximum value. When A is positive, we will have a U-shape, since all the output values will be positive, so the graph will go up. So there will be a minimum value, which is the Y part of the vertex. What do we think it means when A is negative? That's correct. We will have an upside down U since all the output values will be negative, so the graph will go down. So there will be a maximum value, which is the y part of the vertex. Now, let's put all this into action by taking a look at the examples we're going to discuss in today's video. Let's take a closer look at example 1. Now, let's read the steps. Step 1. Label A, B, and C. Step 2. Find axis of symmetry. Step 3. Use axis of symmetry to find the vertex. Step 4. Graph. Now, let's read the question. Graph the function y is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1. First, let's rewrite the function so we can show our work. We have added any hidden numbers so we can more easily determine the a, b, and c values. This time, we have put a 1 in front of the x squared. So a is 1, b is 2, and c is also 1. When we are in standard form, the c value tells us a key bit of information. What do we think that is? That's correct. It is the y-intercept. That's because the x value for a y-intercept is 0. And when we substitute 0 into the function, the result is 1, or the c value. Let's go ahead and plot the point 0, 1 on the graph. Now. There are multiple ways to continue here, but we're going to find the vertex. What do we think is the key bit of information we need to find the vertex? That's correct, the axis of symmetry, which is x is equal to negative b all over 2a. Now we can find the x part of the vertex. Let's substitute 1 for a and 2 for b. So we have x is equal to negative 2 all over 2 times 1 and 2 times 1 is 2, and negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. So x is equal to negative 1. Let's draw the axis of symmetry on the graph. Our vertex is somewhere on that dotted line. Which quadrant do we think it is? Well, let's find out. Also, do we think our vertex is a minimum or a maximum? Once again, let's find out. We already have the x part of the vertex, so let's calculate the y part of the vertex by substituting negative 1 for each x. So we have y is equal to negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus 1. And negative 1 squared is 1, and 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And 1 minus 2 plus 1 is 0. So y is equal to 0. Let's match those numbers together to make the point negative 1, 0. Let's plot it on the graph. 
We could calculate a few points using an xy table, but let's use the axis of symmetry to plot the next point. Since the axis of symmetry is in the middle, we can count towards the axis of symmetry and then away the same amount to find the next point. What do we think that point is? That's correct, the point negative 2, 1. So let's connect the dots so we can finish our graph. Let's go back to the questions we haven't answered yet. Which quadrant is the vertex in, and is our vertex a minimum or a maximum? The vertex is on the x-axis, between the second and third quadrants, and our vertex is a minimum, because our a value is positive, and the minimum value is 0. That is example 1. Let's move on to example 2. Now, let's read the question. Graph the function y is equal to negative x squared plus 4x minus 3. First, let's rewrite the function so we can show our work. We have added any hidden numbers so we can more easily determine the a, b, and c values. This time, we have put a negative 1 in front of the x squared. So a is negative 1, b is 4, and c is negative 3. When we are in standard form, the c value tells us a key bit of information. What do we think that is? That's correct. It is the y-intercept. That's because the x value for y-intercept is 0. And when we substitute 0 into the function, the result is negative 3, or the c value. Let's go ahead and plot the point 0, negative 3 on the graph. Now, there are multiple ways to continue here, but we're going to find the vertex. What do we think is the key bit of information we need to find the vertex? That's correct, the axis of symmetry, which is x is equal to negative b all over 2a. Now, we can find the x part of the vertex. Let's substitute negative 1 for a and 4 for b. So we have x is equal to negative 4 all over 2 times negative 1. And 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And negative 4 over negative 2 is 2. So x is equal to 2. Let's draw the axis of symmetry on the graph. Our vertex is somewhere on that dotted line. Which quadrant do we think it is? Well, let's find out. Also, do we think our vertex is a minimum or a maximum? Once again, let's find out. We already have the x part of the vertex. So let's calculate the y part of the vertex by substituting 2 for each x. So we have y is equal to negative 1 times 2 squared plus 4 times 2 minus 3. And 2 squared times negative 1 is negative 4, and 4 times 2 is 8. And negative 4 plus 8 minus 3 is 1. So y is equal to 1. Let's match those numbers together to make the point negative 2, 1. Let's plot it on the graph. We could calculate a few points using an xy table, but let's use the axis of symmetry to plot the next point. Since the axis of symmetry is in the middle, we can count towards the axis of symmetry and then away the same amount to find the next point. What do we think that point is? That's correct, the point 4, negative 3. Let's connect the dots so we can finish our graph. Let's go back to the questions we haven't answered yet. Which quadrant is the vertex in, and is our vertex a minimum or a maximum? The vertex is in the first quadrant, and our vertex is a maximum, because the a value is negative, and the maximum value is 1. That is example 2. Now, it is your turn. So go ahead and pause the video here so you can take your time to answer this question, and I'll show you the result in 3, 2, and 1. Did you get it correct? Fantastic. If not, there's always tomorrow.